All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about the SIP motion and using that with this actual ball screw. So we've changed out our controller, our servo controller. We've changed it from a Kinetic 6000, okay? And we've changed it to an actual Kinetic 5500. Now, I want you to note something too, that we, we're using our same exact motor. We're using the MPL motor. We're not using a VPL, so there's two connections. There's one for the motor and one for the actual um, encoder. Now that encoder happens to be a hyperface and you need this actual converter right here which is a uh, converter that plugs into the 5500. It's a DSL to hyperface and, and uh, converter. Now with that converter that allows you to convert the signals from the actual servo motor which is the MPL motor to an actual interpretable piece that the actual Kinetics 5500 can use. Now in SIP motion, this is very, uh, very much you know something that will happen in the world, right? We're not going to always use VPL motors. We are going to use MPL motors in some cases, and in some cases you guys already are, so you can see that. Um, so you've actually ran into this yourself, and you can see that this DSL converter is actually what is used. Now uh, currently we have our system powered off, and our motion system. You can see our motion system right now is currently synced but we don't have right here we don't have our ball screw so let's turn the, the system on you'll see the power start coming on so my 24 volts I have a uh, some breakers down in the bottom and a power supply and it also a switch that I'm actually doing the Ethernet through so just keep that in mind the 24 volts is up top my power for my motor and uh, my DC bus is uh, again powered through that as well so that will actually allow me to actually you know have everything working now you see the ball screws not exactly happy yet it's faulted and that's perfectly fine because we're just booting it up right so it's still in the pre-charge method now it's finally come in and it says okay I'm ready right so we get onto the bottom if we click on that we can see that that's running and so we, we actually have our uh, kinetic 6000 our connection through SIP motion through our Ethernet working right so we have our 2198 uh, H 008 and then it's a ERS so that is the current model that I'm using for my servo controller so now that we've talked about that let's look at the ball screw and the way it's set up now I want you to understand too this is a little bit different than what we've done on the Kinetic 6000s so um, not a whole lot when it comes to like changing the motor you still change that exactly the same way but you see the setup is a little bit different, right? So motor feedback scaling is a big, big thing on this. So I want you to understand, we still have a, a five millimeter pitch from screw to screw. Uh, we have a five millimeter pitch and we are a direct drive. So there's no gearbox here, okay? So when it comes down to it, your transmission in our case is a one to one. Now the actuator itself is going to be this ball screw and that's where we need to come in and put our pitch of five millimeters, okay? So five millimeters per revolution. And when it comes to scaling, you can see that I put the units as millimeters. And then the scaling out down here, again, I don't change that, that's just a one-to-one -one per, because that's actual load millimeters. So load millimeters is different than millimeters per rev. Um, and then we are also using this travel. So note that from here to to the very end bearing is only going to be 200 i believe it's 260 millimeters so i'm limiting the runnability of this system i'm adding this feature right here called a limited and i'm saying do not travel over 220 millimeters that's just a hard limit so that it basically says okay i'm not going to do that um, that's a protecting agent so that you don't actually break anything in here again I, when it comes down to it I've actually bought all this stuff myself this just came in I bought it off eBay this as well um, the DSL and wiring everything up and then again this this is just all my custom stuff that I have at my trainer that I've personally built and it, yes it is on a piece of wood but when it comes down to it everything is properly grounded I want you to make sure you note that um, let's go ahead and see the, the way the system actually works when it comes down to it. Now, what I'm going to do is actually bring the camera in so you can see. 
Okay, so real quick, we're starting at the current place right here. Now I want you to note too, um, when we come back up here, the Kinetics 5500, it does not have a home to torque, okay? So you don't have a home to torque, okay? You, so what we're doing is I'm just homing the system and then I'm able to run it, right? So currently I don't have any proxies, I don't have anything like that. I do have an AOI I'm going to be sampling for home to torque, but I do not have that actually implemented yet. So I'm gonna check that out, make sure all that works properly before we actually talk about it. Just so now that we have everything on, we're gonna start at uh, one centimeter, which is 10 millimeters, okay? So on our scale right here, we see our scale, we're in centimeters. So what we're gonna do per our PLC program is our two moves. One's gonna to move to 200 millimeters, which is gonna be up here at the 20, uh, you can see, let's move the camera so you can see that. <clears throat> this is the 20 millimeters, or uh, 20 centimeters, which is 200 millimeters. So this is the top point where we're gonna go and the, the bottom is gonna be one centimeter, which is gonna be 10 millimeters. So let's go ahead and start the system and actually watch it run. Okay, so this will show you that we're actually moving up to 20 millimeters, okay? That's 20, perfect. So that's 200 millimeters, okay? And then we've come down to it. What we're going to do is we're going to stop. Our stop is going to be at one millimeter. So you can see our uh, one centimeter. So that's 10 millimeters. So we're traveling between one centimeter and 20 centimeters, which is uh, 10 millimeters to uh, 200 uh, millimeters. So that's the, the rate of travel. And that just so you, you can actually see that. And it's kind of at a slant too. So if you, if you think about if you're seeing a little bit of deviation like plus or minus like one millimeter it's just because this tab is not perfectly angled with the camera so just keep in mind it is moving between one millimeter and 20 or one mil one centimeter to 20 centimeters which is again 10 millimeters and uh 200 cent or 200 millimeters so that is our current rate of travel. That's the current way that we're doing everything. Um, again, the ball screw is the exact same setup. This time we're just using sit motion. So I wanted to show an actual sit motion, you know, and how the scaling is done with sit motion. Again, if you wanted to actually see that, uh, let's go all, take that offline, open this up again. You can at that's when you can actually see the scaling. So you can change this from direct couple rotary rotary transmission uh, I'm choosing a linear and then my screw type I can change from a belt drive to a pulley to a chain and sprocket to a, a rack and pinion I'm using a screw because this is a screw uh, so that's pretty obvious and I'm putting my pitch of my screw in there for so how many millimeters does it move per revolution it it moves 10 or it moves five millimeters per revolution okay so it's the exact same kind of thought pattern as far as you know putting the equation in but ex this time you don't actually have to hit that e you know calculate button like we did on this uh, kinetic 6000 so hopefully that that you know helped you a lot and that you know you learned a lot from this video uh, when it comes down to it you know I'm putting these out to try to educate and try to help as much as possible we are going to be doing a lot more training on the sit motion drive being that I did do have this now so just keep in mind um, when comes to actually the way this thing work I every, everything is currently set up it is set up to work um, the connectors working everything finally came in again the supply chain waiting on things the best thing I could do was actually get it from eBay and I did so we do have it now so we can actually start training on it so uh, with that said hopefully you guys learned a lot from this video and we'll see you guys on the next one